Morning, everybody. How are you this morning? How are you doing? I'm going to put you over here. Right, let's pray that I can actually do all of this this morning. <laughs> I'm just praying. My phone doesn't do that thing it was doing yesterday. It was so annoying. It kept turning off. It hasn't done it so far. If I look a bit weird and I look a bit drunk, I'm not drunk. It's just I have a very bad headache which um, is disallowing me for from opening my eyes properly. I'm actually going to take a homeopathic remedy in a bit. Because um, last time I had a really bad headache, I took painkillers for like three days, and then in the end, the only thing that cured it was a homeopathic remedy. So, but you don't just take any remedy. You like, there's a there's hundred different remedies for headaches. I've just been trying to work out which one I need. Good morning, everybody. Oh, Faith, you're always so lovely sending the whole family love. Good morning to you all. How are you all doing? Somebody just said on my live, I wonder if it's the, I wonder if it's the weather. You know, when there's a storm about to come, you can get a headache. Mind you, I've had it for quite a few days. Anyway, we will, we'll go for as long as we can. If my head becomes too horrendous, um, we can save for another time. So, right. What are we talking about? Amber and TikTok ghosting and should we cancel our holidays? Okay, well, let's start with ghosting because we were going to do that yesterday and we missed it. So this was off the back of an article yesterday um, that the writer of Everything I Know About Love, which is a new uh, drama series. Did anybody see it? Did anybody see the new drama series? Was it last night? We were supposed to watch it. Oh, whose birthday is it? Happy birthday to you, Joanne Greenaway. Happy birthday to you, Joan Greenaway. Happy birthday, dear Joan Greenaway. Happy birthday to you. Look, guys, I cleaned up my shelf yesterday and I cleaned my cupboards. Do you want to see my cupboards? I spent the entire day cleaning yesterday. I don't know what was wrong with me. It wasn't. Right, look in here. You're going to be shocked. How good is that? And look. Only bowls in the bowl cupboard. Oh, my God. And... Da -da -da -da. I don't even know how I'm doing da -da -da -das with my headache. Um, yeah. So, yeah, an article that we... I was going to do this yesterday of an article um, that this woman who wrote this new drama about millennials and about dating apps. And in this particular article, she talked about ghosting. Does everyone, first of all, know what ghosting means? Because I was talking about it the other day and somebody said, well, what does that mean? Does everyone know what it means to be ghosted? Lee, you're listening in the gym, don't. I'm so jealous. I was supposed to be going to the gym today. I'm on day three of three months fitness plan. Oh, good for you. But you're so fit anyway. Is that annoying? I'm going to notice a difference. So is it no alcohol again, Lee? <laughs> no. Oh, people don't know what ghosting is. Lee, are you able to write a pithy line on what ghosting is or are you in the middle of a jumping jack? <laughs> Let's see if Lee comes up with a pithy line on what to be ghosted is because I think you've been ghosted a few times, haven't you, Lee? Ah, oh, I think he might be doing a, a, a jumping jack. So to be, when somebody ghosts you, what they do is they suddenly um, cut you off from all contact. And I think usually that there isn't an explanation. Um, and yeah, I was somebody there saying, I know exactly what it is. Um, but in relation to dating, this, this article was about, and she was talking really sympathetically to how... Oh, here we go. Leap it. Ghosting is engaging in a chat with someone you've dated or have been chatting to. Then all of a sudden they vanish like a ghost, nowhere to be seen again. There you go. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. Dropped contact out of nowhere. And 
I think Anne-Marie Murray, why they don't talk, call it ignoring what, instead of ghosting, I think ghosting is a lot worse than ignoring because ignoring suggests that there's a time on it. that You could be ignoring someone and they could go back to talking to them, but ghosting means they've literally disappeared off the face of the earth. I could ignore you now. And then I could come back to you. Um, but if I was ghosting you, there would be no coming back. And I just thought it was quite interesting what this woman was saying, that we have to be more mindful of people's feelings around being ghosted. Um, because even if, so say you've just been messaging someone. I mean, I don't know. I've never done it. I've never been on a dating app or anything. And you're kind of getting to know somebody a bit and you feel that it's something there. Lee, ghosting is most importantly not being given a reason for the silence. Okay, so there's been no argument. That's a really important point. So ghosting means everything's going along tickety-boo, and then suddenly they've gone. Oh, is it buffering? Hang on, let me change. One sec. Oh, God, Steffi Quinlan, I had that happen years ago. He disappeared, and then the police were on my doorstep looking for him. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Um, yeah, so I... And, and the, the nub of this article was we really have to give s sympathy to people that have been ghosted that it's actually a deeply painful thing to happen. And really, no matter, it doesn't really matter if you've just been like, if you've made a connection with somebody, it's very cruel, Carol, very, very cruel. If you made a connection with somebody and you've, you've always got hope, haven't you? You've got enormous amount of hope because everybody's, everybody wants to be loved more and everybody wants to love somebody. And... And I think that, you know, as soon as you've got made some sort of connection and you are, you know, getting along, then, then the hope comes in, doesn't it? Oh, maybe this is maybe this is going to lead to something more interesting or could this be love or could this be whatever? Could, or this person really seems to like me, you know, and you'll pick over a conversation, won't you? And what bits did you think, you know, what bits and pieces you think worked and what bits and pieces did they like? And what bits and pieces did they do? I'm not talking about body bits and pieces, by the way. Um, uh, oh God, Lee, I've been ghosted before and I actually searched the news for people who might have died in his area, who matched his description. I thought he must have been killed. <laughs> Cause of course, nobody would just not want to be with you, would they Lee? <laughs> No, but I get that. I get that and I think that that's what happens to people. So then people are left feeling, you know, they shouldn't be, but people are left feeling stupid and ashamed of themselves. Well, the only person that should be ashamed is the person that has ghosted. Um, oh, no, screen's gone black. Maybe it's just your screen. Nobody else is saying that. Uh, yeah, I think that does say more about you, Lee. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I just wanted to get your stories if, if you've been ghosted. Rianne Williams, it's very hurtful, but certainly in a dating context, I think it's an emotionally immature way of handling a difficult conversation that may be harsh. And that is it perfectly, Rianne. When I was younger, I didn't know it was ghosting, but I did ghost people. And here's, here's a little bit of something for somebody that might have been ghosted and, and feel it in pain. I would... More often than not, if I ghosted somebody, and I did used to ghost people quite a bit when I was a teen and stuff, and early 20s, and it was because I would, was feeling inferior, and then because I was emotionally immature, and I was cowardly, I was really cowardly, I couldn't face things, I would run away from shit, like I was your classic person that would let you know, just bills pile up because I didn't know I was going to pay them, and I, I just, I didn't attend to things. And so like I might have missed a couple of calls or missed messaging and then I felt really bad and then I didn't know how to, you know, make the ground up. So then somebody would say, for instance, somebody might have reached out to me and said, oh, I'm just feeling a bit weird. Can we just have some closure? Could you just, and that would freak me out even more. And then I wouldn't even, and then I even more unlikely that I'm then going to message them. So 
I'm being mindful when I say this because I don't want people who maybe were were in communication with somebody that was really toxic thinking, or maybe they were just, were just you know, a bit intimidated by me. And because mostly I think people are little shits <laughs> that ghost, but not everybody. And I think that ghosting is, is you've got to have in your head, a person that ghosts, having been a ghoster, is the one that's got something wrong with them. And it's, and it's hurt me, and it's all right to say it's hurt me. But really try and talk around any feelings or ideas of you've made a fool of yourself or you should, you're, you're an idiot because you're not. It's them. Lee, I don't ghost. I'm the opposite. You can't stop me chatting. I'm going to call it haunting. <laughs> That's really good. You should do a reel on that. He doesn't ghost, he haunts. But anyway, so um, Catherine Clausen, well, doesn't just happen on dating apps. I actually ghosted an ex-friend who was draining me because I didn't want to upset them by telling them I've done exactly the same, Catherine. Exactly the same. And this person just became a very toxic person to me. And I didn't, I got to the point where I just didn't know how to deal with them anymore. So I just completely ghosted them until, until, until they faded away. Uh, I really hope in the rest of my life, because also there is a boundary thing, isn't it? It's like, if you really don't want to be, if you really don't like someone and they're not good for you, and we've all had those people in our lives, haven't we? Some people need to be ghosted. You need to just become a ghost in their life so um, to protect yourself. So sometimes it's, it, yeah, it's for good reasons. Um, Zoe, it's usually something going on with that person and not you, though the silence is brutal. Absolutely. And like Mark always says, it's the hope that kills you. So if you keep hoping that they're going to text and you're hoping that they're going to call. And the thing is, I think once somebody goes to you for a few days, give up on them. Because otherwise you're going to be sort of half, um, half involved, aren't you? God, see, my head's going really bad again now. Oh, killing me. Okay, let's just do a quick one on um, Amber and TikTok. So Amber has gone crazy over um, Johnny Depp uh, joined TikTok yesterday and um, put out a little film thanking all his um, followers and supporters for their support um, and... I think he got something like a quarter of a million views within minutes and all very supportive and oh Johnny you're back and da 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 and da 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 and she put on a, out a statement saying this has taken us back again you know for women's rights and I actually do I do take umbrage with this I'm going to be quite out there on this you know a court of law has deemed that it was defamation, her accusing him of abusing her, right? I've said this lots of times before, loads of times on here before, that I am almost sexist in the way I always swing to the woman's support. I've questioned whether, because she's not a traditional victim, whether I have been manipulated by that, by society, and I'm judging her because she's not a very nice character. Um, but at the end of the day, when I boil it all down and I listen to the films and I've watched her, I watched some more of her today in court, I just don't believe her. I just don't believe her, and that's that. And I really don't like this narrative that is being pushed now from all corners that now women are too scared to come forward who have been victims of domestic abuse. Um, and I think we've just got to stop that. I think we've got to talk more about, no, come forward. Absolutely come forward. Um, and, you know, it's always been difficult to take, um, for, to get convictions, domestic abuse, and when God knows the rape conviction figures in this country are absolutely appalling. But I think we have to support women and we have to encourage women to, um, you know, to come forward. And, and, you know, from a lot of the men that I see posting that feel that they were in a coercive control relationship or in a domestic violence relationship themselves, they say they don't feel heard, that they're not feeling, that they don't feel heard. And I think, you know, 
I was just watching the the bit in the court again where she was where um, Camille um, Johnny Depp's lawyer was saying to her over and over again, you didn't expect this person to come and defend him. You didn't expect this person to come and defend him. And she just keeps saying over and over again, this is merely because he's a very powerful man. And, you know, powerful men, you know, will always have people that lick their asses. Um, and it, I, I think it's just got all too murky and muddy now. And I think we just need to move away from this case and we need to stop giving out the narrative. So I don't actually think she is helping other women that might be in the situation. I think she should be saying, whatever, come forward. Um, no, she doesn't speak for me as a woman. She really doesn't. And I, I, I want her to just, I just want her to be quiet now. Because <laughs> I don't think she's helping the cause. I really don't. Um, I do think there's a massive problem with misogyny across the world i think we are in a dire situation as women i think we have to keep the conversation open i think we mustn't get weary of the me too movement i think you know nine times out of ten i'm just going to boldly stand up for the victim but i don't think we should always say we only believe a woman i think that that's just swinging the pendulum the other way then you know it's just it's just crazy Bev Berry, my dad was a victim of domestic violence by my mum. People didn't believe us. It destroyed my childhood due to being an alcoholic. Oh, my God, Bev. I actually had a very dear friend years ago who was in the same situation. His mother was an alcoholic and she used to hit. And it was just as, not just the hit, but the way that she spoke to him, the way she derided him, the way she ran him down. It was just horrific. And that's, I suppose, the point I'm always trying to make. We could have, we will never totally know the truth. We can only go with what the court of law has said at this moment, which is that Johnny was telling, that, that she had defamed him in accusing him of being, you know, um, an abuser. And we, and of course, we will never know the absolute truth in and out. And, and as we've always said throughout this trial and everything, that drink and drugs have blurred the edges of all of this. And it's always a massive, massive problem. But what I do hope this opens, whether Johnny was a victim of coercive control or uh, domestic violence, whatever, we will never know that completely. Let's hope we've opened up that conversation a bit more for people like Bev who grew up in a violent home, but it was a mum that was violent and nobody believed her. I mean, that's so hard. Everyone needs to, everyone needs to feel heard, don't they? And that's, I'm so sorry you went through that. Just horrible. Anyway, I just thought I'd do a little one on that. Now, next. Is any, now I know lots of people aren't going on holiday this year and I'm really <gasps> mindful of the fact that many are struggling to pay the bills and to, um, you know, just bloody survive at the moment. But there are also many, many people that are still going on holiday. Some people who've um, actually been moving their holiday for the last two years, cancelled holidays, moving, moving, moving. We have actually, we are actually doing, we're doing some filming abroad this year for a vlog for you guys. And then we're having a family holiday just for a short time, but we're doing some filming beforehand. And Mark has been saying to him, who's that? Which dog's crying? Oh, do you want to come in, you silly sausage? It's just the chair. You can come in. What's the matter? Come on, Chichi. Um, oh, I'm moving my head. Um, uh, uh, um, anyway, so Mark's been saying, oh God, I'm getting really worried. Oh God, she keeps finding these round stones as a ball. I'm getting really worried and I'm like, oh God, stop panicking. It will have been sorted out by then and, you know, let's just wait and see. But they're talking today about these problems going on for the next 18 months. Don't you dare book, I'm waiting for, cancel, I'm waiting for the vlogs. Well, this is it. We've got an amazing vlog planned for you. Um, what do you think? Have, are any of you thinking of cancelling off the back of everything that's going on? Are you just going to push through and hope that 
it all sorts itself out. I mean, there was a woman on the radio yesterday saying that they were getting a 5.30 a.m. flight and they had all the nerves and everything and they'd gone through check-in and they'd gone through to the departure lounge and were just getting all excited about getting a bacon roll and a Bloody Mary. You can have a Bloody Mary at any time at the airport, can't you? And her husband got a text saying, your flight has been cancelled. Dina was saying to me yesterday that she heard of somebody on the radio who was on the bloody plane and got a ta text from EasyJet saying it was cancelled. And I'm sorry, at the moment it seems massive. Well, no, British Airways have cancelled 100 flights. They cancelled, well, no, more than that. But I mean, a few weeks, a few months, I can understand, but cancelling people while they're on the plane. Would nobody cancel? Would nobody cancel? Just say yes or no, would you cancel? If you were booked for a holiday late this summer, would you cancel? My homeschooling co-op are all going to France for all the kids to play together in person. Couldn't bear cancelling, we're driving down just in case, Melanie, yeah. Yeah, and it's all the kids, isn't it? They get so excited and you think, oh God, I mean, the, our girls have been talking and they've, They've been talking about this like every day. They go, oh, I can't wait for holiday. I can't wait. I'm thinking, what if we all get there? And then, I don't mind so much if we can't get back, but it's all getting to the airport, isn't it? And you, do you lose the place on the villa? Do you lose your money? I mean, I don't know. So anyway, anyway, anyone, anyone cancelling? Come on, make me feel strong. Say, don't do it, Nadia. Brave it through. <laughs> Jet 2 in Tenerife had no problems. Well, everybody I know, all the loose women and everything, everybody that I know that went away this last tranche of, of nightmares, nobody had a problem. Nobody. It, 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 it seems to be about one in five people, one in five planes, and, and then it's just like absolute, like, you know, Armageddon. Don't have the option to. Been rearranging since spring 2020. The voucher runs out next spring. We would lose 4,000 on our flights. How can they let the voucher run out? Well, they, no. But if they cancel your flights, that voucher will have to start again. Oh, you're not cancelling. You're going to Croatia, Marie. This is what I need. I need people to, to tell me. Because it's Mark. He's dragging me into the worry. You know what he's like? He's such a worrier. I'd take the fine and go in school time, says Keely Windle. Well, wow, that's what some people do, isn't it? Somebody I know has just been taken to court. It's being taken to court for their kid not going to school. Her son like goes like whenever he just basically whenever he fancies. Um, yeah, we did have problems coming back from Berlin. I mean, the thing is, let's face it: if we only get as far as the airport, and then on the plane, you'll have at least three vlogs out of that, won't you? <laughs> Of course, you guys love it because you know whether the holiday goes well or the holiday goes badly, you're going to get good vlogs. Hmm. I know you lot. You're vlogtastic. I know lots of you are asking where Mark is. Mark is... Um, Mark, hi, darling. Yeah. Um, Mark is at... Sorry, I got distracted. It was Maddie. Um, Mark is at the Sundance Film Festival. Did he tell you what happened? This is so exciting. So you know Popcorn Junkies are, are in our are, are movie Instagram, and of course Popcorn Junkies on here, all the reviews and everything. We've now got press accreditation, which means that Mark can be at all the festivals, he can interview the directors, interview some of the actors. So he's in all kinds of heaven, I can tell you. He's watching films, I mean, making notes all the way through them because I think he's interviewing the directors in the next couple of days. Yeah, so he's really chuffed. So if you don't follow the Popcorn Junkies, please follow the Popcorn Junkies over on Instagram because don't forget, every few weeks as well, he does a giveaway um, for um, cinema tickets. We got the most lovely letter the other day. Oh, my God. From the last winner or the last, I don't know, a few winners ago. And she said, thank you so, so much. She said, I took my daughter for the very first time to the cinema and we had the most amazing time. Oh my God, we were so chuffed. 
Okay, cinema is bloody expensive, so yeah. You have a chance often to win uh, uh, two cinema tickets. So make sure you follow um, the popcorn junkies. All right, my darlings, I'm going to go now because I need to lie down and do something with my poor wee head. Um, yeah, his reviews were brilliant, weren't they, of the Johnny Depp child? Absolutely brilliant. I bought him the Johnny Depp perfume, one of my anniversary presents to him, and he just smells of Johnny Depp all the time now. It's very handy. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss anything on this rather marvellous channel. Lots of love. Bye.